let's dig in a little bit more there. And why I brought up the emotion is because anytime there is an emotion, it could be, you know, good, bad, or otherwise. It's just what emotion is coming out. And that is sort of your your cue to like keep tapping on that door. That is where it's a sticky point where we need to dig a little bit deeper because there is something that maybe you thought you resolved years ago, but there's still something left, right? I think that there's mm -hmm. this false narrative around that is just, well, I healed myself or I healed this aspect of, mm -hmm. you know, when I talk about holistic pieces. It's the wellness wheel. There's so many aspects in our day to day that I think people in the past, well, I've buttoned that up like check mark. Thank you so much, Anna, for being here today. It is such a pleasure to have you. And I would love for you to just dive into your journey, how you got here today, and then we can go a little deeper. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me today. So within the health coaching industry, um, I started in 2017. I formed the LLC of Anna Kate Whole Health in 2017. And a lot of what the, the health coaching aspect um, of my practice was at that time was food and fitness. And I did that for a good three years with clients. I was also working full-time um, doing a children's health and fitness initiative and, and fitness instructing, et cetera, for bar and, and body pump. So I was kind of doing a lot of stuff while I was forming this entity. I loved it. Clients sort of just came naturally, which was great. And the patterning of it at that time, just to give a little background of in, within the coaching world, was very much that every other week for six months, we sort of like tackle what it is that you need within that food and fitness realm. That was my pitch at the time. As I met with clients within those three years, and then I took a little bit of a hiatus, moved to Denver, did something else um, for a while in the wellness space and operations space, I realized how much of it was behavior change. And so then again, starting um, full-time here within the entity, I think, let's say a year and a half ago. So I sort of picked it back up again. I completely redid the methodology, right? It sort of needed to look different because when I was talking with a business coach about what it is my purpose is and what I want to bring to the table to make an impact to people in the world in this entrepreneurial space, it was less about like the recipes, the personal training, how, how to work out those kind of pieces and more along the lines of habits, rituals, again, behavior change and how we can get people into that sustainable nature of just living their life generally healthy and happy instead of saying, I'm going to put a bandaid on this quick fix or anything like that. I always want people to just know you are where you are for, for a reason. And then we'll, we'll walk through it to get to these next phases in which you believe you want to become, or you want to be. So that's a long-winded way of saying it was 2017. <laughs> I did it for three years within a different space and realized from the clientele, because that's where you get the feedback, is that it was more about the life and lifestyle coaching than it ever was the really specific, like, this is what I need to eat and this is how I need to move. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I sort of changed the patterning of it and, and molded it into this nourish mind, body, soul in which it is today. I love it. And that's a huge part of just knowing that it's the behavior changes, all the things we're doing on a daily basis. It's not like, okay, this is what you need to eat. And this is the exercise versus really getting to the root of things. So I just had this conversation earlier today of just what's going on with our bodies and not just putting a bandaid on something, getting to the root cause of things. So you can live a full life. You can have sustained change because I know so many people that go on diets or exercise programs and they do it. And then as soon as they get off, it goes back. And sometimes it's worse or everybody's a little bit different, but I love this concept of nourishing the mind, body, and soul. And I think that is a huge testament to the work you do. And I know you have a method and it's called ACWH. I got that right. And it really is about that awareness and education and implementation that you're talking about of just like the daily practices. Can you elaborate on how that method came about? Yeah, absolutely. So again, when I 
came to this full time in this new realization around it, um, my program development background and just nerding out aspect um, of my human design came out. And I just, because I love like just all of the information, input, knowledge, and then how can I disseminate that out to people? And so, yes, if you, obviously we'll talk about this, but if you go on my site, there's a whole graphic and diagram in which it easily explains the method. So ACWH is just a very easy way of saying Anakate whole health, but the method itself is all bait. Like you, the client, you are in the center and then it's the body and soul, but we go through guided cycles of awareness in the mind, then the body, then the soul, then we do education and then the motivated implementation because it's all the why and how, right? We need to become aware of what it is we're even doing right. in each of those realms because they are so interconnected. And then what, like I, you need to be educated around these choices and these decisions and these, these larger concepts. So, you know, and you're grounded in a foundation that you have, like you're empowered enough then as a client to always have you as your guide essentially in life leading you. And then the last part is that motivated implementation. That's kind of on a macro level because mm -hmm. it's all focused on those whole health practices mm -hmm. in my, in my realm, which is within the mind, body, soul, we have those whole health practices that we're constantly coming back to because we need to be resilient in life, right? Mm -hmm. Like change is the only constant, mm -hmm. like I always say. And so when things arise, what is it that you can do and that you've taught yourself and then on a macro and then micro the whole time, the whole plan, this container that we're in, we do micro implementation of these whole health practices because you have to practice. Things will come up, those limiting beliefs and these, these new facets within our realm, right? And that's why I'm here to help coach people in that micro stage throughout the whole 14 weeks and beyond, just because it, other things come up that we're not expecting, right? Like I did a whole thing yesterday or two days ago about emotion. Mm. And what happens within this methodology is that that's why it's lifestyle. That's why mm -hmm. it, lifestyle is the biggest piece of this and health is just, or well being is just the offshoot technically. Right. Because everything we do, I mean, you could come to me for weight loss or chronic inflammation or anything very specific, but what's going to happen is something in your relationship or something in your career or something, you know, within finances or some sort of within that safety and security level mm -hmm. comes up. Those emotions are telling to us that there is something in our life that needs to change. And we can only do that within the daily patterns of our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that's yes. a big, again, a big round way of saying, explaining what it is I do, but it's all the whole health practices that I come back to. So grounding in constantly, because when you know yourself best, mm -hmm. that's when you're able to change and sort of radiate from the inside out. And those things that you've been wanting or needing or anything in your life, that's when it sort of comes to fruition. That's when the manifestations happen because you've figured out who you are within your entity, right? Mind, body, soul again. Yes. And it's a beautiful concept because they do think it's not just what we're eating, what we're doing on a daily basis. It's also the emotions, the spirituality, like the whole holistic approach that I know you take. And it's really important to look at, okay, yes, these are the big things happening, but there's a lot of things that are smaller that are happening, are happening in our daily life, especially relationships, the emotions. And I do think that plays in a huge part of the choices we're making, human behavior. I could talk about this for hours, being from psychology background, <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to at the moment, <laughs> but I, I do love this concept that you have really focused in on to really help guide your clients and every individual you work with in being, and I'm really curious, how do you identify and address the areas that may be lacking that awareness or needing those attention aspects in each dimension of their lives? I think back to what I was just talking about. So when yeah. you're going through, it's hard, it's hard if you don't see the diagram, but if you're yeah. going through these guided cycles that I lead people through mm -hmm. again, our, 
our natural limiting beliefs come up when it's the sticky moments, when it's the times that you're realizing, you know, you're journaling over and over about the same thing, right? Like everything, how do I explain this? It's sort of transmitting out of us, whether we're constantly harboring the overthinking or there's something hurting, like I'm just with anger equals hurt, right? Like, so where mm -hmm. is all that coming from? Or a physical vessel, the body is aching somewhere. We have to listen to those cues. Like it's data. So again, everything that's dis disseminating out is data for you as a client. And for me then as a coach to say, let's dig in a little bit more there. And why I brought up the emotion is because anytime there is an emotion, it could be, you know, good, bad, or otherwise. It's just what emotion is coming out and that is sort of your your cue to like keep tapping on that door that is where it's a sticky point where we need to dig a little bit deeper because there is something that maybe you thought you resolved years ago but there's still something left right i think that there's mm -hmm. this false narrative around that is just well i healed myself or i healed this aspect of mm -hmm. you know when i talk about holistic pieces. It's the wellness wheel. There's so many aspects in our day to day that I think people in the past, well, I buttoned that up like check mark. Well, I think things just still are there, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we need to also like micro focus on only that. It's just going through that and figuring mm -hmm. out why it is and what it is that is coming up, work on it. And that's just a part of you. And a lot of what I do too is the self-acceptance. It's the mm -hmm. self-trust. It's like trusting yourself in realizing what is coming up and why I have these pain points any given place. And or when we move through those, again, it's not going to be like nicely folded and put away in a closet and it's never going to come back again. That's right. okay. We need to start accepting all of that and just moving through life as it comes. And it being super grateful for the, right? Like the past, that's fine. Live very much in the present within those practices. Because when you feel out of sorts or like your question, what are those things and where, and how do we work on them? Yeah. You just move through. You're your best source of help, of guidance. And that's the foundation. And then the magical, you know, future of what is to come. But always trying to live in, this is what I did today the best I could today. And we move on to the next day, right? Like we're, we're not perfect humans. I worked on that forever within myself. <laughs> and Same. so the expectations that we put on ourselves and others, mm -hmm. that's what we sort of need to let go of. And then you can just start becoming more of who you are. And the irony of all of this is yeah. that like when the lifestyle pieces start to form, that's why it's so much like the life coaching. Yeah. The natural physical goals that you might have for yourself, for the inflammation, for the pain, for, you know, PT or any sort of like weight loss stuff. It, yeah. Those are, I don't mean superficial, but those are just the painkillers as somebody mm -hmm. told me. And we need to move through the, the solid base. And then all of a sudden those things just naturally come, right? Like you maintain a healthy weight. You're choosing the most nutritious foods. You're loving a version of movement every day instead of the have tos or the should tos. It's mm -hmm. or should, should. <laughs> it's more just like I get to and or I need to in this moment because I'm understand myself well enough that this will help me move through this space that I'm in. Absolutely. And you're so spot on on so many levels of everything you said. And a lot of times there is this perfectionism that comes up of, I should be doing this. I ought to be doing that versus, okay, how can I be present? Acknowledge what's happened in the past, but how do I give myself more compassion and self-love? And that's something I know that ter those terms are thrown around a lot, but I think it really is a lot of hard work and something I'm still like, it comes up, it creeps up every once in a while, the perfectionism. I'm like, okay, I get it. I hear it. I see it. <laughs> but kind of pushing that down and acknowledging everything I have done and I think a lot of times people with food and exercise and their overall well-being, there is a little element of, well, if it's not perfect, I don't want to do it or things along those lines. But when it comes to those daily patterns and lifestyle patterns that you really help people through, what are some of the common patterns and habits that you do see in your clients? 
that they are currently doing or the things that help them progress? The things they're currently doing that are yeah. stopping them. Yeah. I mean, I think very well, the new year's coming up. So very much that, that this start point mm-hmm. and a midway and an end point. And I think that's what I try and get people to let go of. Mm-hmm. Um, so dates around certain things, I think overthinking anxiousness definitely mm-hmm. gets in the way of like, well, I did this, so it should work this way or ruminating on, on certain aspects of things. And I will say within the health and wellness field in general, there's so much information that I think people pick up on one thing and that's the direction I need to go, um, to fix me. Right. But I work a lot with so there's a multitude of dietary theories and I really don't like to pinpoint just one. I mean, if, if I'm working with somebody that, you know, has different professionals, like mm-hmm. psychiatry and, and PCPs and all of that, like we'll work together because there are definite areas in which we need to be specific. And I understand that. Mm-hmm. But most often when people just think that it should be one, one way because they read something sometime, that's what we need to get, get rid of, I guess, in your mind. And and that's so much of the awareness piece. The self-awareness is like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Does it even match? Or did I just hear this? Or did a professional tell me this and now I need to implement it? And that's my, the, the fix and the cure-all. Yeah. Um, so I do a lot of like bio-individuality because yeah. what is going to work for you is not going to work for me, my sister, you know, your brother and aunt. And we have to be very specific about knowing ourselves and hearing also what the body is telling us in terms of that of speaking food and fitness and that kind of like nourishment on the body level. What li- listen, listen to your body. I just don't think people do that. And the, the simple, the better as well. Right. People just get so hung up on, well, I need these recipes or I need it to taste good. And oftentimes I tell people like, just, it's so scientific and boring, but like, think of your body as it's just the organs. Like you are literally feeding and inputting food into your body. So each of each part of your body anatomically is functioning optimally. That's all you need. And So it's that fine line between simplicity and also a cleanse because people go wrong there too. It's like the cleanse or the diet, or I'm going to do this for five days. Or, I mean, there are tricks of the trade and figuring out again, what does work for you. But I think people just go like this with it Mm -hmm. instead of this is how I am. This is what I do. Let's crowd out some of those maybe negative aspects you know, are you eating like sugar or drinking soda or is it too much coffee or, you know, little things like that, just drink more water. And then the other stuff will begin to, you know, kind of slough away. So it's, it's the stereotypical, there's too much information. People don't know where to go. They've, they've with coaches or Mm -hmm. programs, it hasn't worked. They get down on themselves about it. Um, And that's what I mean. When I think you when I think you focus on who you are as an entity, that's why I coordinated the mind, body, soul. It's less about what you're doing and more about, you know, I take the deep breath there because every, we all need to slow down. Mm-hmm. Like, every, who am I? What is it that works well for me foundationally? And I believe and I trust in that. Yeah. And then those goals. <laughs> come to fruition, right? You lose the 10 pounds. You are more mindful. You all of a sudden are meditating five minutes a day, or you are getting quality sleep. But all of these come from over here where you're aware of just who you are and what you're doing from a behavior aspect of your life. So well said, because I do believe it's not a one size fits all. Everybody's always looking for the quick fix or, oh, I'll try this cleanse. I'll try this detox. I'll try this. Well, it didn't work. I don't know why I went back to how I was before and then some, but I I think it's the fact that you really focus on the sustainable change across the board, where it's the little increments 
that is going to make those changes. Just like the example you gave with water, if you're drinking more water, other things might start to decrease. And that might not be right for everyone. Somebody might be drinking enough water and need something else. But I love that it is focused on each individual person because they're a whole entity, as you explained. And that's how I look at it too. It's the mind, body, soul. And something might be going on in their life that's transpiring into their health issues or what is going on for them in that moment, but realizing and seeing it and taking it in that approach, because I feel like it's, you're looking, when I visualize that as a whole world, you don't know what each spot has, but you got to dissect it in each element and focus on one thing at a time to start to implement those changes versus I'm going to change everything at once because that's where a lot of people, especially the new year, everyone's like, oh, new year, new me. And it's like, no, it's the same you. It's just adding or subtracting certain things to your life that's going to make it a little bit more wholesome and feel better from the inside out because that's where it all starts internally then externally versus seeing all these things, all the information that's out there, it can be so overwhelming and it might not be the right solution for each person. Like, and that's where a lot of programs I think are that are out that I've heard of where it's, okay, it's a one size fits all or okay, come into my program, we'll work through this. But I love the approach you take because it really does help the whole person. And that's what it's about because everybody wants to feel better. Nobody wants to walk around feeling horrible like with their health, with their mind, their body all those aspects, but I know a key element of your work is transformation, being able to really help transform their entire world, step by step though, not all at once. <laughs> if you're on a transformational journey, what does that look like for your clients? How do they navigate through that cycle of awareness, education, and implementation? Yeah. And you can give a story or two. Sure. I mean, I think to your point, I think the biggest thing is not jumping the gun and mm -hmm. thinking, I'm going to go to the doctor. And again, nothing against the yeah. physicians, but like, I'm going to go to the doctor and get a prescription to help fix this one thing. Yeah. So like you said, it's, it's playing that intentionally of mm -hmm. there, there is a point, let's say, and we'll work on that specifically, but then you have to realize that yes, holistically, it's all connected. So if you have like, let's say the back pain and I mean, kind of like hormone issues, right? With some of my clients within that perimenopausal realm. Mm -hmm. it, what I always try and get across is the, how do I explain this? The, what is within your body, right? Like that lower back pain, let's just focus on that. Over and over and over again, it's not getting better. You're going to the Cairo, you're going to PT. And I do believe in all those things still. Yeah. Acupuncture, you've got medicine, but- what if, right? Like this piece, what if it's just stuck emotions sitting in there? And mm -hmm. I think that's where some clients, I, depending on who they are, I ease into that perspective with them, but it's the awareness that it is all connected. And so when your mind and soul, when your heart and soul can clear up a little bit, some of the physical ailments that you're you know, taking the medicine for, seeing all these practitioners for, that slowly dissipates because you're working through, let's say that stuck yuckiness that's been there for years and you don't know any better, that starts to disseminate like and, and get out rid away from your body. So, I mean, in terms of transformation, yes, I've heard it a lot where it's like, oh, it's taken a lot longer clients have said it's taken a lot longer, but I can't imagine what I was like a year ago if I wouldn't have started, if that makes sense. So why I say those rituals and things as so simplistic as what we already know we could and should be doing, which is the journaling, the celebrations at night, like the, the soulful reading, um, a, like play in your fun. Yeah. It's all of these aspects that I think my clients you know that you should be doing, but your life is so busy. And there's so many other aspects of like the external energy outputs that are coming at you. You just have for years, like down, 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 down. Right. And, and you're not allowing yourself even just that small amount of time every single day. That's the transformation. I mean, it seems so silly, but it's from day one to let's say, you know, month four. I just don't think people see how much can change within those. I mean, if I'm just using a four month window mm -hmm. within that period of time, we just keep going and going and go society. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And again, clients have said like, I wish it wouldn't take so long, but mm-hmm. the problem, well, it's not even a problem. The, the good and bad is that you've mm-hmm. been conditioned your whole life and seasons of your life to act and behave this way. And so it takes so long. And this transformational journey is a process because we're deconditioning all of these things that we thought we should be, we needed to be, whether it's our own, again, our own expectations or external, we're ridding that from our life. We're allowing ourselves to become more and more from the heart space of who we truly are meant to be. And then in, in turn, it gets these results on the, on the other end. Exactly. And so that's the transformation, whether it be, you know, I have had clients for six months, every other week, all the way to, you know, gosh, a year and a half. And we do, and we do weeklies. And so it's the affirming to yourself that by taking time for you and trusting your next best choice, positive choice for you, it will actually help everybody else in your life. So there shouldn't be guilt. There shouldn't be Mm -hmm. any negativity around I'm choosing the 30 minutes for myself or the five minutes here, you know, by myself, we have to just continue to decondition and understand who we are truly and who we want to become in our most authentic self. And again, that's where the results come. That really is the transformation. I love it. And it's the freedom and wellness, right? That's what is screaming out to me and just being able to live your life authentically and move through it. And it does take time. It's a process. I used to say this all the time when I was a therapist, people would expect me to help them fix their life in literally one session, especially Mm -hmm. couples, because that was my strength working with couples and families. And there's so many dynamics going on just with two different individuals or a family, but the same concept with our health, it's not just our physical health. There's emotional, spiritual, the whole entire wellness wheel. You look at that. And I love that you incorporated play because I don't think we do that enough. Once we grow up, our inner child is like, Hey, I'm over here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back. I'm really into puzzles right now. It's like, just I love puzzles. <laughs> like everybody just take a step back. Right. And yeah. I also like with the soulful reading, like we don't mm-hmm. need to do the 30 second, five minute clips. We need, yeah. we need to now listen to music, do a puzzle, like watch the long form content, begin to integrate what you can in this amazing world, but do it for the benefit. It sounds selfish, but it's not for you because then you become a better person to help the world. Exactly. Spot on. We need more of that. We need more people to do this. But I want to switch gears for a minute. And, you know, I love the journey that you've gone on. You really have just exploded in being able to help in the wellness industry. What have been some of the obstacles you've had to encounter while building your business? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, because it's what I do, I would say, I mean, personal growth and development is a big one. And I also just think the way the coaching industry has blown up. Mm -hmm. So in 2011, I think, yeah, 2011, I got my master's in community health education. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we started talking at least the worksite wellness and all my thesis was on that, like social marketing and the wellness aspect. It was so narrow at that point. Then I sort of moved into my the own my own practice. And I think it was a very niched space. Then it kind of blew up. Mm-hmm. So between 2019, when I was taking the hiatus and now mm-hmm. with COVID and everybody, I mean, just online and all of the aspects of it that we know in today's world, it's just a very heavy kind of saturated field. And so how do you differentiate yourself? I think is Mm -hmm. one big aspect or challenge. Mm -hmm. And then I also think the trends, the way Mm -hmm. in which I've seen things go from 2011 till now, I mean, that's a large span. I understand that, but it is so different. And so I think it's also to anybody out there in the entrepreneurial world, world, you stay authentic to the way you want to do things, the way you want to reach clients or the way that you coach or whatever it is that you're doing, product, service, et cetera. I think that's, those are some of the big challenges is like, what does the market look like? It changes so rapidly. 
in what it is and how you're garnering these clients. Mm -hmm. And then also staying true to yourself. Like I want with clients, like you have to do things the most authentic way because otherwise it just depletes you. It, it, there have been where I'm like, I'm just spinning. I'm just doing things. And I'm always asking myself for what, like, what Mm -hmm. am I doing this? Let's say video or podcast or blog or anything. There's so many shoulds. And it's like, how do you narrow in on what is going to be the most effective Mm -hmm. way again, to make an impact? Exactly. And it's living that life authentically. And that can be really challenging when you're first getting out there, putting yourself out there on video. I know I struggled with going from therapy where back in the day when I was a therapist, no therapists were on social media compared to today, but it was really uncomfortable moving from therapy to coaching and putting myself out there. I'm like, wait, this isn't confidential. Hold on. Wait, how do I even function in the world? And that I think a lot of people starting out, they're going from whatever industry they were in prior to a new industry or just putting themselves on camera or putting their voice out there can be really challenging for a lot of people. But I love what you said. It's just really focusing on what feels good to you at the end of the day, because there's going to be somebody else doing something similar and whatnot, but there's room for everybody. And that's like my whole thing. I think there is enough for everybody, but it's how do you move through the world? How do you show up? as your powerful self, because you have something to offer, everybody does, but being able to really stand in that power and allow yourself to show up just as you are, because that is perfectly imperfect, because nobody is perfect. The perfectionism will go away eventually. You got to work on it, but it will go away, I promise. But even with all the obstacles you've had to endure, what are some of the tips that you wish you would have known when you started your business that you know now, or that you've recently learned, maybe? I think that... I heard it from a few people over and over, but until you do it, you don't believe it. (laughs) So much of it is the business aspect of it, Mm -hmm. which again is totally fine. It's just finding that really good balance, especially starting out where you are. I mean, you're the one doing everything. So not all of those things might be your forte or, you know, I would love in a dream world to only be coaching or to only sort of garnering knowledge, disseminating it out, like how that's what I want, right. In my, in my design, but there are so many other business cycle system aspects to it that I think you need to be ready for, or make sure that you have a good, I guess, foundational system into back to the authenticity, but what works Versus trying everything yeah. and becoming constantly overwhelmed because you'll have cycles of, of constant overwhelm then. And then that thing at work. And again, I don't, I mean, I think it's, that's another lesson and a tip I would have is yes, try things, but also listen to your energy. Like, you yeah. know, if you feel like that's a thing that you just want to kind of like kick and scream and bah, you know, you push yourself, challenge yourself. But if it really truly is something that isn't fitting, there is someone else out in the world that that is their forte. That is their gift. Find help, like ask for help a little bit. And then another thing is just the loneliness aspect of it. I mean, I think as a solopreneur, you, you get so Mm -hmm. that you forget (laughs) how to ask for help. What is important taking the time away from the business instead of constantly just always being in it. Yeah. I definitely saw that firsthand. And, but it, like you said, it, it's just a big shift from I'm working for people or maybe behind the scenes more than I am out front. So it's very much getting comfortable with your edges. I mean, really, and then learning when is it time to maybe ask for somebody else's expertise (laughs) or does that not work and push it away? I mean, it's, it's always a a guessing game, the Mm -hmm. most intelligent way. That's what I would say. It really is. Like you're kind of just step by step and you're doing the best that you can. And you don't always know if what you're doing will make the biggest impact in those moments. Mm -hmm. But I also had somebody tell me that when you think that what you worked on for so long 
was a waste. It, it isn't. I mean, someday it will come back. It will come to fruition in some mm-hmm. regard. So just also, yeah, whew, have a little faith in yourself and keep going, you know? Yes. I think that sums it up perfectly because there's, it is a very lonely journey, but having that support, knowing that you're not alone in this process, but having systems in place, I think are super important as well, because you don't want to be running around trying to do everything you're doing, especially in the beginning, because you are usually the person doing everything behind the scenes. And you're like, I've never done email marketing. I don't like it. I need to outsource this or just even video editing. I had to learn how to do that. Thank God I have somebody now, but it's all those pieces that you learn what you know you get to learn a new skill do you have to be perfect at it no but good enough to be able to pass it off so you know somebody is doing it the right way those kinds of things but I love that you said it is just really having that awareness of what speaks to you what is important to you and be able to move through that and there's going to be a lot of lessons and I agree that it's never a waste of time what you've learned you learn how not to do something look at Thomas Edison with the light right electricity we wouldn't have electricity if it wasn't for him there's all those factors, but if he had given up after 9,000 times, we would still not have electricity, but he kept going. And it was like 10,000, I think, tries before he invented it. But those are the pieces and understanding each element is going to get you further along, whether you see it right now, hindsight is twenty twenty. So just understanding that I think is a big part of that process. But kind of speaking on that systems and tools aspect, what are some of the things that you use on the back end to build your business? Yeah, I think the things that I consistently come back to, like we just talked about, we try other things and it it doesn't necessarily work. Um, But Canva, I've used a lot. That's very commonplace these days. And it is funny too, the authenticity, the reels and things like that. So trying, you know, I mean, video. So I do iMovie. I'll do later Mm -hmm. for scheduling, just so it's not always one by one. Um, MailChimp has been a big thing. Um, I did use ConvertKit as well for landing pages. So Mm -hmm. depending on newsletters or landing pages, one or the other, great. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Fiverr, Mm -hmm. I actually use to help, again, ask for help. So with my podcast, Your Wellcast, I ended up needing somebody to edit because I was like, okay, I can I can go three steps and then let's, let's have somebody help. And so Katie, I met this great girl. And so she's helped edit my podcast, a great turnaround, great um, efficiency there. And I think Joby is some of the tools that I actually use for the podcast. Again, I haven't done the guest. So back and forth. So it's super yes. simple, just like me solo in a room, but it works. And then Yeah. I mean, with my specific clientele, I do Instagram and Facebook just because the the meta suites connected and it it's easy that way. I also want to say Substack and medium too, because Mm. I'll do articles. That's where they'll be. The they'll be published on both medium and Substack. So many tools. I wasn't expecting that many tools. I'm like, yes, yes. No, 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 no. This is all good information because it's not just one thing. And I think that's the big concept of understanding Some things are going to work really well. Other things you're going to test and be like, I never want to use that again. Okay, great. You learned that. And now you don't have to waste your time trying to figure something out where it just doesn't work for you. And that's okay. That's, that's part of the process. But I'm really curious because I know you've been helping so many people. You're empowering so many women in particular. What is your vision for the next year to a couple of years for your business to grow and see it thrive? Yeah. For, for Anna Kate Whole Health, I would absolutely love to allow the product to help women as well. So if it's time, investment, you know, energy in the moment where they can't do one-on-one coaching at that specific time, I would absolutely love the the sort of paced course and the academy can sort of grow beyond the the signature of the one-on-one where it's the 90 minute sessions with me plus the curriculum and the education aspect of it all right with documents and resources and all of that I would love to just make a grander impact that way where it's the ebook kind of mentality and like the self-paced course um 
And I also am really excited in 2024 ab- around the idea of these VIP days, simply mm-hmm. because that's where everybody needs to start. People sort of, like I said at the very beginning, what are what are the, it's overwhelm, it's jizzy, it's I've done this before, or I'm, I'm not trusting myself, I don't know where to start. Mm-hmm. I think it's so important to, again, ground yourself. And if we do these VIP days, it's just you and me, it's a six hours, like let's dig in. And again, our conversation, it doesn't need to be January 1st. It doesn't need to be, it's a new year, it's a new season, or it's my birthday or a wedding. Like I love all of those things, but wherever you are, and whenever the the energy starts calling to you because you're annoyed and those frustrations are happening, that's when you can start. And so I think Yeah. I mean, in the next year, you know, you think three years, it's sort of just building out that ECWH Academy and allowing the tools to empower women out there because I would love to work with you. Absolutely. But I also know life Mm -hmm. it's, it's chaotic out there. And so when you can do it and when you feel empowered Mm -hmm. and when it works for you, I mean, I would love to just help in that regard. I just think I've said this before on Insta, like women, we just don't allow ourselves enough grace and kindness and to just set those boundaries for ourselves. And again, just start believing in ourselves and like giving ourselves the permission slip to say, yeah, I can start. That's where all of that kind of comes in. Like let's deep dive. I'm here to help or or do it yourself. But I just want to empower women to oh, trust themselves. They can make the best decisions for themselves each and every day. Yes. And I love that you said it's meeting them where they're at because a lot of times people think, okay, January 1st or a wedding or an event or something or birthdays. But it really is that when you get so uncomfortable, it's like, I, I'm ready to make a change now. But I think it's you have to be ready to start to implement those practices, those lifestyle changes that are going to last and be sustainable over time versus just a quick fix. Because that's, if you look at anything that's great, it's never quick. It Mm -hmm. is a process and you appreciate it more. But I think it's having what you said too, grace and compassion for ourselves in that journey and knowing it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be ups and downs and everything in between, but having that trust in ourselves that we owe it to ourselves to work on us from the inside out. And we have that capability if we allow ourselves. But if we don't, and we're so focused on the quick fixes, we're gonna miss all the beautiful moments that can happen by going through that process. Does it, is it frustrating? Yes, is it uncomfortable? <laughs> Absolutely, but that is part of the process. And we are able to appreciate it a little bit more when we have gone through that transformation, just like what you were saying. In those four months, people say, okay, well, I wish it was a little faster but they're able to really sustain that and appreciate it and absorb everything that they're learning to empower them. And I cannot wait to see how many more women you get to empower with everything that you're doing in this world. It's beautiful. It's amazing. And I think it just speaks volumes to your character and who you are to really shine your light through the entire world, but starting right here in Denver and everywhere else that you go to. (laughs) But Anna, thank you so much for being on today. Where can people find you, find your services? We're going to link below, but if you could let us know too. Yes, absolutely. So Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, it's all at Anna Kate underscore whole health. And then the website is Anna Kate health coach.com. And I can be found there. DM me, let me know what you guys are up to and follow along. And I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Anna, for coming on today. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment below what was the biggest takeaway from today, and we'll see you on the next episode.